All right, guys, you're joining me for dilations. Today we're going to do just a few dilations centered on the origin. Whoa. Whoa. Okay, when we get to unit seven, we're gonna hit dilations harder, but we're just gonna dip a little pinky toe in the dilation pool today. Okay, a dilation changes the size of a figure, but not its shape. So after a dilation, the angles of the image are congruent to the angles of the pre-image, but the side lengths will, know, uh, will be longer or shorter. The special name for figures who have angles that are congruent but whose sides are not is similar. So, so far, all of our transformations have produced congruent figures. Um, these do not. Okay, these are not isometries. They produce similar figures. Um, so think about like, you know how your pupils dilate? Okay, your pupils can get smaller or bigger, but they're still round little circles. Like you don't turn into like having cat eyes. You know what I mean? If you did, it'd be weird. Okay. Um, the scale factor. is going to tell us how much the figure is enlarged or reduced. We did something like this in Algebra 1 when we said it was vertically stretched by a factor of however much, okay? It's, it's changing the size, okay? But um, the scale factor isn't just going to stretch it up and down. It's going to stretch it all the ways. Um, the center of dilation... is a fixed point from which all points of the pre-image are either enlarged or reduced. So if any of you are artsy-fartsy and have done any perspective drawing, you know how you have like all of your lines have to like disappear to a vanishing point? Okay, that's going to be like our center of dilation. So yeah, if you're an artsy-fartsy person, stay tuned. Everybody else also stay tuned because you need this. So we have to find the image of triangle PIG using the dilation centered at the origin and having a scale factor of three. So we're going to center at the origin. Now, um, we want to dilate it by a factor of three, so it's going to get bigger. So notice how right now point P is one, two, three units away from the origin. Okay, we are going to multiply that distance by three. So instead of being three units away, it's going to be nine units away. So here's six, here's nine, here's the image of point P, P prime. So P was three units away. I'm stretching it by a scale factor of three. I'm tripling the distance it is from my origin, my center of dilation. Okay, let's do G. Okay, G is two units under the origin. So I'm going to triple that distance under the origin. So two times three is six. So I want to go six below the origin. Here's two, four, six. Here's my image of G. Now I saved the tricky one for last. Um, it's a little bit hard to tell how far away I is from the origin because it's not going directly on gridded lines. It's going like at an angle. So all we have to do, though, is take three of that length. So it's going left one up two, right? So here's another one of those. 
and here's a third, okay? And that is where I will end up. There's I prime. So I took that little distance and I just tripled it. Okay, connect my points. And there is my dilated image. It's pretty cool. Okay, so the coordinates. Um, let's start with P prime. P prime. That would be 9, 0. G, uh, I prime, that is negative 3, positive 6. And G prime. Uh, that is zero negative six. So is this transformation an isometry? Why or why not? Well, if I look at my angles, I can see that angle G and angle G prime are congruent. I can see that angle I and angle I prime are also congruent. And I can see the angle P and angle P prime are congruent. But look at those side lengths. Those side lengths are very different. So what we have here is a similar figure, set of similar figures, not congruent figures. So this is not an isometry. So we're going to say no because the image is not congruent to its pre-image. These are only similar triangles. They are not congruent. Okay. All right. We'll get, again, we'll get more into this in Unit 7, but what do you think that the scale factor has to be for this dilation? So here I have a length from the center point to A. And then here I have that length again. Do you see that it has to be double? So that one's double, this one is double, I'm kind of giving away the plot here, but this one is double. Okay, so the scale factor has to be 2 because that length got doubled. Um, I didn't have this on my figure, but I will add it to yours so that yours are correct when you do these notes. But I just realized that I assumed that those were the same length. So I'm going to mark yours congruent on your paper so that you can tell that these are congruent segments. Okay, so I will make sure that that is on your notes so that you don't assume and do bad math like I just did. Okay. Okay, cool. Let's flip to the next. Okay. So I have to find the image of trapezoid PQRS using the dilation centered at the origin with a scale factor of one half. Okay, we're going halvesies. We're going to make a little mini image. Uh, let's start with P. Uh, 
Okay, so P is one, two, three, four units right and four units up. So I want to take that and I want to go half that distance. Okay, so if I'm looking at this, halfway to P would be the point two, two, and that's going to be my point P prime. Okay, so here's point two, two, that is P prime. Okay, S, here I'll write that. This was at four, four, and this one's at two, two. Okay, let's look at S. S is at two, four. So if I do half of that distance, I chop this segment in half, I'm at one, two. Okay, so that's going to be our new location where we're gonna put S prime. So that is one, two. So we're just taking the X's and the Y's and we're doing half of the distance to the origin. Okay, look at, oops, I'm going in a weird order. It's fine, it's fine. It's just math. Okay, so Q is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight away from the origin. Eight, zero. So we want to go half of that distance back toward the origin, putting Q prime at four, zero. And R is at negative two, zero. So if I split that distance to the origin, my R prime will be here at negative one, zero. And there's my little tiny trapezoid, tiny little trapezoid. Okay, so here's a fun thing. All those lengths of the sides are half, but the area is like way less than half. Isn't that fun? Okay, so let's write down these um, points real quick and then we'll be done. So P prime, that was two, two. Q prime is four zero. R prime is negative one zero. And S prime is one two. We're done. Okay, now get caught up on your homework.